Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. Welcome to today. It is going to be an amazing day. As you join in, be super hopeful and expectant. God has a plan for your life. Amen. He has a hope and a future for you. Oh my goodness. As you join in, be expectant. God is just going to bring so much wisdom today. This is a broadcast you're going to want to save. Send to your friends. Amen. It is time to breathe, time to breathe in Jesus' name. You know, I think about Ezekiel 37, where God's prophecy through the prophet was to breathe on dry bones. And we're going to look at that today in relation to areas in which you're just going at such a fast pace, that which is of the world, and you're not taking, taking time to smell the flowers, to smell the roses. And so we're gonna look at smell the roses today. And I've got my crimson shirt on to smell the roses. Hey, Lisa, hey, Tanya, hey, Rachel, God bless y'all. Thank you for joining in. Oh my goodness, writing this book, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease. Hey, Andrea, the emphasis that Holy Spirit keeps showing me is just seeing one another on this earth. Life is so short. And to just share that love of God, of Christ Jesus, with each other while we're on this earth. Listen, there is such an attack of the enemy against the minds of God's people, as with Paul the Apostle in 2 Corinthians 12, where the messenger of Satan is sent to buffet the flesh. Areas in which you've not submitted your heart and mind to eternal life, who is Jesus Christ, those areas are going to come up in this hour and you're almost going to feel schizophrenic not that you're having hallucinations or hearing audible voices not any of that but just that you feel like you're going crazy and these thoughts keep entering your mind and you're having this wrestling match to take your thoughts captive second corinthians 10 and let me just put out a plug too fyi if you're out there, if you're a female, if you're a woman, there are some issues in, with imbalanced hormones that can really affect that. But also, let me just say this, for TMG, trimethylene glycine, which is a triple methylated glycine, trimethylate, trimethylene glycine, trimethylglycine, that also helps with schizophrenia. Go figure. And of course, it's not an end-all, catch-all treatment for schizophrenia. It is just known to address issues of schizophrenia. What's interesting is I address this in my book, Mindfulness, Man of Christ, at the receptor level where God has me get into information. Good morning, Lottie. I love you. Information that's packed at the receptor level where it's stored as memories and when neuropeptides and or frequencies hit this receptor in your body, hundreds on every single cell in your body. And in the new book, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease, I'm gonna get into the GPCRs in the brain, not only sitting on top of the cell membrane, but also inside of the cell, in the nucleus, in the endoplasmic reticulum, in the mitochondria, and all I can say is get ready. But let me just give you just a little bit of information. Some of y'all are in a rut and you're stuck and you're in this same old cycle and you can't get out. And I think about TMG and just remember, I'm going to be talking about DNA methylation in chapter five of the new book, which is chapter earth five, chapter five earth and talk about DNA methylation and methylation in every single thing. God created the expression of methylation. What does that mean? It means the switch is flipped on for good genetic expression in relation to what I'm gonna be addressing today. And what is amazing is, is that because of this mutation that is in many people, more often than not, the epigenetic expression is sequenced, you know, sequestered it's restrained. And I think about the expression of God's call in our life and how those areas of which the earth is a fallen state, a fallen condition, and there's areas in our member where we're not expressing the fullness of the call that God has for us. 
So let's look at this in an analogy. There's two things I'm going to bring in, and it's in relation to the new book, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease. And the first thing I'm going to bring in is where you're restrained in language. Language. Language is so important. We see this with Jesus Christ, who what is the word. Jesus is the word, okay? And so language is important. When God created things, he what? He spoke the word. And scripture shows us that we will have what? The fruits of our lips, the fruits of our words. So we're gonna get into the condition of the heart and the words we speak and getting out of the rut. And I'm gonna analogize that to DNA methylation and also feeling spiritually schizophrenic. Not that you're hearing things or having hallucinations. Remember, I've done outpatient psychotherapy. I've worked with schizophrenics, actually. But also, I've brought in an analogy in my own life in relation to the attacks of the enemy that come as messages. And the reason I say it's messages is it's not auditory. It's thoughts. These thoughts that come into your mind and you know you wouldn't think these things. And so the enemy takes opportune moments in which he presents himself. We see this with Jesus in Luke 4 and Matthew 4 when he's what? In the wilderness and the enemy is what? Speaking to Jesus. We don't know how this played out. We weren't there. Christ was there. We don't know if it came into, uh, the enemy's thoughts came into the mind of Christ speaking against his mind. We don't know. What we do know is that Jesus Christ confronted every single attack of the enemy with what? It is written. It is written. And so I want to bring this to your consideration where you're going through life and these crazy thoughts come in your mind. You know, thoughts of failure, thoughts that you're not good enough. One of the biggest thoughts that's more prominent than not is that you aren't normal and other people are normal. You know, those normal families, the normal parents with the normal children. Let me just give you some peace and shalom. If people are human, guess what? There is no normalcy. You're in a fallen world, and so we're dependent on Christ Jesus, and we are pulling on the sufficiency of God's grace for our weaknesses in our time of need, looking up to where our help comes from. Amen. It is God that keeps us humble. It also keeps us dependent on wisdom, James 1, 5, and 6, that comes down liberally from above for those what? who know their need as they hebrews 4 16 run to god's throne of grace to obtain mercy and grace for what their need and so this is wisdom so let me get into relation to those messages <clears throat> and it restraining your language and now god bringing you into a greater day time moment where the breath of life is gonna flood you and fill you, and you're gonna get a yoke-destroying anointing to be able to speak more articulately with wisdom from above as you watch your words and watch over your words, and the Father gives you those words so he can watch over them to perform them, amen? That's what Jesus did, he said, it is written. That's why I love to pray. <clears throat> scripture is because God watches over his word to perform it. Amen. And so let's look at this and let's look at some of these areas. When you grow up, when you just live life, okay, you're going to have repetitive words, especially that the enemy is going to try to restrain you with. These are negative words. These are words such as can't, failure, not worthy, I am just a mess. These are negative words and they speak unlovely things about you. They make you feel inept. They make you feel just 
like complete worthlessness where there's no value. And so those particular words are language that's become the prison bars to your destiny. And today is to break out of those prison bars to see past it. And we see this with Isaiah 60 verse one, arise above the place of prostration and depression in what circumstances have kept you. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of God has risen upon you. It is the word of God, Jesus, the word of the kingdom of heaven. It is a language that is given to us from above as Jesus is in our heart, eternal life. And so what happens, we're mindful, we're aware of these negative words that make us feel inept. And this is the reflection, the image that is in the kingdom of the world that we're looking at constantly and expecting a self-fulfilled prophecy. I talk about this in the Forbidden Fruit, the spiritual dis-ease in chapter one with Job 3, 25, where the very thing I feared has come upon me. Job the prophet knew this. And so when Adam and Eve were brought into the kingdom of the world and the kingdom of heaven was shut until Jesus came to earth, at that moment, man's language changed and it became the prison bars of his soul. This is Ezekiel 37. And so the dry bones have an I can't attitude. They have an impossible uh, breakthrough. This is indicative of the reflection of the kingdom of the world, the dry bones, the bones without the power of eternal life, those that are in this hopelessness that don't know the will of God for their life. And so they have no hope. And so because of Christ Jesus, we have Christ in us, Colossians 1 27, the hope of glory. What is that? The thoughts, the opinions of God, what about us? Jeremiah 29 11. Not only the thoughts and the opinions of God about us, but the thoughts and the opinions of God about others. That as we know that he loves us, as we know we're fearfully and wonderfully made, as we know we can do all things through Christ Jesus, that we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm, that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places, that we are a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. As we know that, guess what? We're of a different kingdom. And so that means that our words have power. Our words come from God himself and he backs them up. Our words are the authority of Jesus Christ and his power of the kingdom of heaven. This is the wrestling match where there is an ineptness to express that. And I'm going to liken that again to DNA methylation. So this DNA methylation issue in relation to MTHFR, and you know what's so sad is some people see that as a negative cuss word. And if that is your thought, let me tell you what, that's the kingdom of the world. If that's what you think, I can't see how you can look at that and even make that word, just negative words out. If that's what you're thinking when you look at things is negative, worldly things, then that's a sign, that's a symptom that you've got the kingdom of the world in your heart. So let's look at this mutation that is keeping your DNA from expressing itself and making proteins, amino acid, amino acids, the basic building blocks for you just to function and to not just survive, but to thrive. And so that particular mutation that is in people, now it is expensive to get a genetic test. And again, it's a gene mutation. And this, the letters, the short letter version of it is MTHFR. And that indicates 
a reductase enzyme methylation issue that is keeping your DNA from expressing itself to optimal level. So diseases such as leukemia, heart disease, other issues such as depression and anxiety, as well as issues such as schizophrenia, as well as being very pale, having heart fast rate, having, de having issues such as depression, such as nausea. These are symptoms that are indicative of this mutation, which means your amino acids are not being expressed to build the main building blocks of your ability to just function. And so because of that, there is this TMG, which is trimethylglycine. It's glycine with three methyl donors on it. And so what it does is it goes to your DNA and it removes that repressive thing that is keeping it from being expressed and it just removes the bars. And so your DNA is able to be expressed, your genes, and you have optimal output. Well, guess what? The mutation of the enemy against your soul and insecurities about who you think you are is very much analogous to Ezekiel 37. As dry bones, I can't, everything's hopeless. Listen, God just had the prophet speak breath, speak flesh, speak that the bones come together. God just had the prophet. Hold on one second. Let me know if you can see me because it said slow connection. Let me know if you can see me. So God just had the prophet, okay? He just had the prophet speak to these bones that came together and flesh came on them and breath came in them. And they're still saying, I can't. It's impossible. Why? Because Ezekiel 37, 10, 11 says that their hope was cut off. Their hope was cut off. Oh, good. Thank y'all, Lottie and uh, Katie. Thank you. Our hope is cut off. And so they have these I can't negative all of the kingdom of the world die agonosis. Saints, this is exactly what fear does. Fear in your soul is from the kingdom of the world and it puts restraints on you and it limits the language of God's kingdom of his word of truth in you and it causes you to be bound up to where you can't move forward and you're just caught in such a depression and oppressive state that you're unable to break out of these bars and you're not looking at the blessings. So this is where it's gonna change today. As you get out of that language of the kingdom of the world, the first distinctiveness is an attitude of gratitude. It's called a thankful heart. Enter God's courts with thanksgiving, enter God's gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. When you have a grateful heart, you get out of the bars of the kingdom of the world. When you just acknowledge the small things, stop listening and looking at messages of fear. I keep telling people over and over and over, fear is of the kingdom of the world. And if you look at it long enough, it's going to come into a self-fulfilling prophecy because it's the reflection inside of you that is going to manifest in your environment. And we don't want that. Listen, you have the environment of one of two kingdoms in and around you. We have the kingdom of heaven in us when we come to salvation because of Christ Jesus. But the thing is, is, is your oil in the flask as in Matthew 25 halfway full? Or is it all the way full? If your eyesight is on the kingdom of the world, your oil is going to be halfway full. And guess what? You're not fully thriving in the kingdom. You've got a mixture of the world in your heart. And this is what God's salvation of Christ Jesus does in us is it rids our hearts of the kingdom of the world. We cleanse our garments from it. 
We don't think like it. We don't live according to it. We live from a higher level. That is why Paul the Apostle said to the, the church of Ephesus in Ephesians 1-3, listen church, you might be in this area where you're being thrown in dens, being fed to lions. You're being thrown in the gladiator's ring, being just, just martyred. But listen to this church. In the most martyred time of the church, Paul the apostle spoke to Ephesus and he said to them, you are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. Stephen knew this. That is why Stephen could stand up and shone with light when the Pharisees stoned him to death because he saw Jesus Christ seated at the right hand of the Father. He, he saw him standing up, saints. This is the power of the kingdom we've been given. So the first thing is to have an attitude of gratitude to thank God. Then the prison bars of this world, they disappear. And then to constantly declare, it is written. Think about Jesus Christ. The enemy in the wilderness would put things forth and present it as truth. But Jesus knew God the Father, the Father of truth. And he knew that you cannot tempt God. He knew the Father and his love and everything Satan threw at him, he overcame with it is written. Don't let the enemy use scripture and pervert it and bring fear and condemnation. That is not of God. It is the spirit of the world. That is of Satan. If you feel condemned, if you feel fear, it is of another spirit. And so not only an attitude of gratitude, but praise God for the blessings you have today. Praise God for the blessings he's going to bring tomorrow. That's what the dry bones learned in Ezekiel 37, as in verses 11 through 13. God said, prophesy to them and tell them I will bring them out of their grave and they shall know that I am God when I put them in the land of promise. Saints, the promised land is here for you to step into, but are you still in a grave? Are you still rolling around in your past pains, in your past hurts, and the abnormal things and how abnormal and messed up you are, how abnormal and messed up your family is? Saints, that is of the kingdom of the world. That's not the kingdom of heaven. So you know what? Praise God for the blessings he's given you. Acknowledge him, acknowledge his goodness, and praise him for the blessings that he's about to bring with it is written. And that mutation of the kingdom of the world that has suffocated the expression of the blessings of truth will be completely removed as you move into your destiny, into your call, and watch God, watch over his word to perform it. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Have an amazing day.